Hey everyone, so today's tutorial I decided to uh, dedicate to Visualizer or Magic Viz. So I know it's going to be probably a long one and I'll probably divide it on, on two parts and in today's part I'm actually going to show you how to build a stage uh, or let's say a small stage and how to attach the objects, what sort of objects you can enter and how to import them and so on and so forth. And I'll show you a few more things, how to hang stuff and how to spread them evenly. So again, I may not know everything about it, so forgive me for that, but today at least, after watching this tutorial, at least some of you hopefully will learn something new. Okay, so I'll try to speak less of how I see it, what I do, but I'll actually show you how I do it. Okay, let's go. So you can see here, if you look at the, the standard show file that I use a lot, it's called uh, Chauvet Demo. And you can look around, you can see we've got a truss of uh, like, uh, what, how many? One, two, three, four, five trusses here. So we've got one circular truss, one uh, half circle and three straight trusses. So then we have fixtures on them and they're all positioned differently. And they, then we have also the wall of uh, of hats actually positioned. Uh, so the wall of multi hats positioned, uh, positioned towards the audience and some fixtures on the floor. Then we, there's also drape, but uh, a lot of people asking uh, in, a, in, in a Facebook, oh, how would you add this? How would you add that? So instead of actually looking the manual, like I will repeat it again and again in my videos, what read the manual so i will show you how to do it so i'm going to save some of your time again so okay let's go through step by step and i'll show you how to build approximately the same stage by yourself so we'll go with setup new show yes so we start the new show file it's absolutely empty there's nothing there so you'll have to press patch then in the view heads you can start with patching your fixtures. This is your normal way of starting the show file. But if you already know, if you have in your head approximately how your stage is gonna look like, what sort of trussing you're gonna have, so you can actually start from, uh, uh, starting from, you can start actually from trussing. And you will thank me after that why I'm saying start from, from trussing. So if we'll go with view this, so it's in the patch, and then there's a button called view this. So you have three tabs in the view this window. It's one of them is called selected heads, this heads and attach objects. What's the difference between them? So these uh, selected heads are the heads that you actually patched and then you selected. So that means you can manipulate those heads that have been selected. These heads will be the list of all your heads that you already patched. And also there is another one called attach objects. So attach objects allows you, uh, this, is the, this is the list of all the objects that are not heads uh, that are not fixtures. Basically, trussing, uh, pipes, 3D models, and all these things will be in this window. So let's start with the basic truss. So we're gonna go with the insert truss, and we're gonna put the truss. Let's say we're gonna make, ah, you see, the truss has appeared in the visualizer, and let's actually make the truss a bit longer. Let's say we're gonna make a maybe around 20 meters long. So you have different parameters. So you have the type is the truss that we've created. There's a model straight truss and I'll, I'll come to this, uh, to this menu at some point. And there is also the truss name. Truss name you can actually modify and you can say, for example, uh, you can say blank and you can type front truss and press enter. So now we have a name front truss, then you have the length, width, height. So in different objects, there's a different parameters you can change. And in this one, you can change obviously the length. So let's say, let's make it 20 meters long. Then if you click on the menu, uh, on the visualizer and actually drag the, with the, on the trackpad, you will be able to see the 3D position of the truss. So now when this object is selected, you can look at the three encoders here, which is the position X, position Y, position Z. So that means position X, you can move it that way. Position Y, you can move it up and down. So in the magic queue, Y is vertical. So X horizontal, Y is vertical, and Z is the depth. In some other programs, it might be different, but this is as it is here. 
So this you can actually move like a, a front and back. So let's say we're going to put it somewhere here. Okay, let's do the next one. Let's do another truss slightly at the back and slightly lower. So we're going to click, uh, we can actually click here, insert, truss, and the truss inserted. It's actually scrolled down a bit. So if you go up, you will be able to see this is the second truss. So we can say back truss again, back truss. So now you can see it's there and you can actually go and position it lower and slightly to the back. So this is our back truss and let's keep it 12 meters. Yeah, let's keep it as it is. So the next one is let's add a circular truss. To do this, again, you press insert and again, you press truss. So the truss has appeared and it's standard 12 meters. But what you can do is, so now for this truss, and we're going to call it, let's call it circle. We can actually change the model. Double click and you can choose curved truss. Now you have a curved truss. So what you can do with that, you can, for example, position it forward move it up, for example, a little bit, and using X, Y, and Z rotation, you can actually rotate them as well. So maybe something like that, okay? That's already starting looking nicer and more interesting and more complex. And let's go further than that. So what are the models we can add? And I will not be using all of them, but I will show you some of the examples. You can press insert and you can add a pipe. So if you have a pipe as a part of your uh, stage, you can actually have a pipe here and you can increase in size, let's say 10 meters, and then you can rotate it uh, 90 degrees. Sorry, uh, 90 degrees. And you can move them with a X, Y, and Z position. Okay, so I don't need that as uh, basic pipe and uh, invisible straight. Invisible straight meaning when you select invisible straight, it's useful when you hang fixtures on this and you don't actually want people to see it. This is how it's going to work. So I'm going to show you later on when I attach the objects onto my truss. So uh, let's delete that pipe again. That could be a pipe truss if you're using on the stage, but in our case, I don't need it, so I'll remove it. I'll press insert another one, and let's look at the wall. Uh, well, you can actually use, no, I don't think you can use the wall. Well, I never used the wall, so I'm going to skip that one. So the another, uh, next one is actually the form. So if you add the form, by default, it's going to give you a cube, but you will see nothing on the screen because there are no dimensions of the object. So if you come here for the cube and you enter, let's say, 5 meter by 5 meter, and then you put the height 5 meter, you will actually be able to see that it is a square. Uh, so it's a cube. So if you move it here, and this is our 3D object. Again, you can use that uh, as the um, as the prop on the stage, etc. Or you can change that to the sphere. So you have it a sphere. You can change it to cylinder. You can change it to cone. Or, most importantly, you can actually change it to sheet. So when you change it to sheet, what you can actually do it, you can use this as uh, an LED wall. So again, if you never used it, open the manual and you can actually see how to apply the, the media player onto the sheet. So uh, I might do the video about it at some point, but for time being, I'm just telling you, you can actually apply it as a, a, a video screen. So all you have to do is just give a dimensions, width and height. But as recently, one of the users asked and then couldn't figure out how to actually use it as a background. For example, you would like to apply it as the green background, so you will be able to key out everything behind the stage. In order to do this, you can actually increase the size of this. So, for example, make it 25 meters by 25 meters, then move it around. Move it behind stage for example oh, okay okay i'll make it say 40 meters 
by 40 meters. Okay, so now I'm going to move it back behind my trussing, behind my everything, just closing the, uh, closing the wall and I'll put it lower. So what you need to do is you need to apply different texture on it. In order to apply a different texture on the object, you basically need to create a file that you will use as an object uh, sorry, as a texture. In my case, I created a basic file called green bg, bg is a background, dot jpeg. And all I did it, uh, I opened the documents, I opened magic queue, and in the magic queue, there is a show folder, and in the show folder, there is a, there is a folder called bitmaps. So if you go here, you will be able to drop your uh, file over here. So it says green bg.jpg. So just make the name easier because you will have to type it in. So now when I already dropped that file in, all you have to do is in the form under the sheet, you go to the right side of the of that window and under the texture, you double click and you type in the name that you gave to the file. In your, in my case, it's green bg as a background dot jpeg, and I press return. Boom. So now you have a green background, and you can key it out. So that means that your customer will see, for example, uh, your stage, and then behind the stage you can put anything you want. Okay. So. For time being, I will delete that because I don't need it. The other objects you can enter, uh, uh, you can add, sorry, uh, will be uh, room. So the room allows you to actually replace the custom room's dimensions, the walls and everything, and make it bigger. So if I enter the room, it basically the custom one or default one's been replaced, and you can here now go and adjust the length of the room, let's say 30 meters by 40 meters width by 25 meters. So now you increased the dimensions of your room. If you don't want it, you want to go back to the standard, you press remove, you delete it and your standard walls and the room is going to be back again. Again, insert, you can insert people and you can see the person added there, was as added there. You can press men standing, woman standing. You can choose men sitting, woman sitting. So you can add as many as you want people there. Then as well, you can add furniture. So when you press furniture, as a furniture, there's a drum kit is added. You can actually double click and you choose the other options here. So, but there's another trick I will show you. So, if you add, let's say, turntable. So, turntable is really, really tiny. So, you can't really see it because it's actually small compared to a lot of stuff. But if the size is too small, all you have to do is you have to use the height parameter as the scale. So, what it means is if you make it as multiply one, it's actually quite big size so it's actually quite big so what you can do is you can say 0.2 and then it's going to be close to reality so you can actually play with that parameter with any object the one that you put in and the height parameter is basically a scale for you so but scale is goes as times two times three times four etc instead of just an abstract number so another thing you can do is you can add uh, a drape so you can add a drape this is the drape and you can put it behind uh, behind people behind the wall just to make it simulate that looking like a drape but unfortunately at the moment you cannot change the color of the drape it's only gray color i don't know maybe changed in the, uh, it might be changed in the future but for time being it is gray and the last one is the model so again, uh, I had I've seen a lot of people asking the same question, and they they get 
uh, stumbled across the problem they they cannot add the 3d object and again the question the answer will be read the manual so the model is entered then a lot of people look at the model they double click and there is nothing so the trick is as described in the manual you have to scroll to the right and there's going to be a texture so in the texture you can actually double click and use import model so if you click import model it takes you to the show file and then you can go to and I would suggest you to drop the files into the models folder I would say from the easy to find and most commonly used files it will be obj files 3ds files or dae which is a collada files so ma uh, magically supports more different formats but these are the most um uh, most widely used if you have any other formats i would suggest you to download something like blender it's a it's a free 3d um software you can export from it you can import any files let's say from sketchup or anything like anything that is a uh, drone files like a cad files that magic viz does not accept so don't ask please we do not accept the sketchup files because they don't have the 3d information that we need and support so drop it into the uh, uh, export it from the sketchup uh, into the uh, into the 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 formats like obj or uh, or dae and then you will be able to import in because uh, sketchup is also n is now payable model has a payable model so and um, not everyone actually have the full professional version of it so import it into the blender export it as a dae uh, obj or 3ds and you will be able to import it and in my case there is a file called volvo.obj so you click on it and then you can change the x and, and z axis upwards etc so we say y axis are upwards and then you can use the units is the decimeters uh, meters inches or feet so i'm using meters and i'm saying done so when you enter it you will not see the model because as you remember I showed you the height parameter or the scale parameter is switched off so if you put say 2 and press enter you will be able to see a car there maybe I'll put 4 so the car is now bigger and yeah so you need to put uh, for example rotation X minus 90 degrees and rotation Y 90 degrees as well and you will have it um, uh, you will have it in a normal position for you and you can then play with this and put it anywhere on your uh, on the stage so again play with the rotations play with them uh, with the positions and that will be fine for you so and now let's go into the patching point where I will show you quickly how the stuff works here so in order to patch stuff you go to patch view heads and then you choose head let's say we're gonna say choose head we're gonna choose by filtering to life that's going to be Chauvet and then we can choose uh, Maverick MK2 spots that's the one I normally easy to work with and then we patch it let's say we're going to patch 15 heads we press 15 heads and we will say it's going to say would you like to insert them in a visualizer say yes so now I imported the 15 heads into my visualizer so this heads actually appeared right here in the bottom but what you can do is the easiest thing to do is if you have the older heads selected you can press in the selected heads window you press fit to object and you choose the truss let's say front truss now the heads have been hanged on our truss and the cool thing is if you select your truss let's say front truss you can actually move the truss up and down and the hats will follow this is really cool because you can do the rotation and the hats will stay in the very same place another thing I'll show you is if you look at the head so I had quite few people asking questions but what if my heads are actually in the real life position at the front of the truss or maybe at that side of the truss or maybe they're positioned this way or that way so the way to do it is you have to when you have 
had selected and I'm sure not many people know about it but if you go in the view heads in the patch and you come here and you select the hang type select the hang type and click on this part of the window you're gonna see the options here bottom rear bottom front let's say bottom front if I select bottom front you're gonna see they move now to the front part of the truss I can do the same things but say turn front face up and they will be positioned this way. If you go here and says bottom boom, it will be hang this way. So again, knowing this will give you more tools to play around and actually position your head correctly as they will be positioned on the truss. So let's do the final few bits and then we're gonna call it a day. So let's, let's patch more fixtures. Let's go again, choose head, Chauvette and let's patch Maverick MK3 uh, wash the latest features from Chauvette and we're going to choose the option that says basic 21 channel and I'm going to patch let's say I want to patch six of them I'll press patch it and I'll press six and I'll press enter so the head's been added down there so what we do is we go up and we say patch it uh, sorry not patch it sorry we'll, we'll say view this in the selected heads magic 3 m key wash is selected and we'll say fit to object back truss so when the fixtures are there if you want to also play around with them and actually change the distance between the heads you actually have also the fan button that works for you so if you press fan as usual and you use the x position so they will go horizontally i would suggest hold shift button to make it like a 16 bit and then you will be able to actually move them together it's also a nice trick and the last thing i will add will be i will add the dimmer fix uh, dimmer hat so i will go here and press choose dimmer media i will say generic dimmer and i'll press patch it and i'll press let's say 20 four of them right now the fixture has been added and let's add them on a circular truss we'll press uh, view this selected heads while the heads are selected we'll press fit to object and we we'll press circle truss so we can see now the f the fixtures are attached to the circle truss, which is great. But what if you actually have not a circle truss, you actually have semicircle or like a, a half circle. In that case, is the if you look at the curved truss, there is another parameter you should be aware of, and the parameter is called parameter one. So here, depending on the angle you enter, you will be able to change this, the, 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 how the truss looks. So if you enter 180 degrees and you press enter, you will see that it's now that part of the half, screen, uh, half circle. I think if you put one minus, no, yeah, if you, put, you have to put 180 and you will see half of it. You will be able to move, the, move it around, let's say on the... Um, uh, yeah, let's put even on the Y rotation. And then maybe you're going to change the X rotation. So now you have a truss that will look... Okay, that's not probably straight. It needs to be 180. You can always change it and type in the values, but let's just make it simple. So now I changed it and it's half circle. But how to fit all of them in half circle? Because they are all, all there. So what you can do is, if you go back to selected heads and you say again, fit to object and again press circle. And now they will be stretched along the circle that is there. But you remember I also told you about uh, the invisible stuff. Look what's going to happen if I press invisible curved. The curved, uh, the truss has disappeared, but the fixtures are still there and they're all positioned nicely and together. So using trussing 
is the easiest way to actually position the heads together and allocate them in the 3D space of the Magic Fist. And as you've seen in the latest competition that we did uh, on the Magic Q, you've seen how people effectively use their visualizers and it works really great, especially if you have really powerful graphic card. And the last one before we finish is going to be in the visualizer. A lot of people actually not aware of, but in the visualizer, you can actually add gels to your generic object. So for example, in Dimmer, if you look up, you have an object called gel. So here you can actually select this. So you can select the gels of some of the heads and type in, let's say, red color. Okay, so for this one, you can actually type in Lee filters, one, uh, say, uh, one, one, eight, light blue. And this one could be uh, any other, uh, Roscoe, I think it should be through the, uh, with a dot, one, dot, one, twenty. Yeah, it's Roscoe filters. So now, oh, let's say I'm going to change to, okay, that. So now, if you want to actually see that, you can select your dimmers and press locate and you will be able to see that in the visualizer now it, uh, you actually have the, those lights with the gels applied and it's all free of charge okay that's all for today and i hope you liked it if you have any questions feel free to ask i'm really sorry it was long one but i had to do it because here at least i managed to show most of the parts and i will make another tutorial where i'll show you where you can use different options of the magic face thank you very much and have a lovely day Bye-bye.